hearts in worship as we praise your holy name you deserve the glory and the honor Lord we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you yes there is no one else like you for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you, yes, Lord. There is no one else like you. Come on, let's lift up our voices and we sing. You desire the glory and the honor. And the honor. There is none. Lord, we lift our hands. Lift our hands. do better than that the Lord is good and all the time yes we are going to begin with that song that says that he's the creator of the universe and they said nothing is impossible with him let's put hands together i 
What can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? Name above every other name. What can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus?
by your name there is none like you. You are our rock, you are our salvation. The song we're going to sing says, Lindida Yesu, Linda Yesu. Ababa mulindida, bamulaba. Ababa mukowola, bamulaba. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. I pray that it will be our prayer this afternoon. That we will wait upon the Lord.
Father, I want to thank you for your word that those who wait upon you, King of Kings, you will always hear and receive them. I want to thank King of Kings that you never sleep, no slumber. You protect us, you guide us, you look after each one of us. When we are going astray, Lord, we come, call upon your name, you bring us back. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you, King of Kings, for your love, for your mercies. Thank you, Jesus, that even this afternoon you brought us here and you've gathered us here in your presence to hear from you, to receive from you. We commit our time together into your hands that, Lord, you will speak to us, that you will, King of Kings, energize each one of us. We give you glory and the honor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. We join the Lord's prayer together. Our Father in heaven, allow be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive the sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory yours now and forever. Amen. We shall sing that chorus of that song again as the choir leads us. Abalinda Yesu, as we go into the moment of intercession. Still in the same mood of prayer, Father, King of Glory, how you dedicate Uganda Christian University, a center of excellence, into your able hands, O oh God. I pray for the Vice Chancellor, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, and all heads of various faculties, the teaching and non-teaching staff. But Father, I pray that you'll give every leader strength, that they do not grow weary in their leadership role. Father, the task may seem overwhelming and exhausting, but I pray that every leader will recognize that they are assigned to do your will. Give them the wisdom to make intelligent decisions. Give them the courage to remain steadfast and to always be welcoming, inclusive, and open and to witness for Christ in all their daily endeavors. We pray for our families and peace for our nation. God our Father, loving and merciful God. We pray for our nation Uganda and all the neighboring countries, the entire universe. We pray for Gaza, Israel, Ukraine, Russia, DR, Congo, Sudan, and all affected areas where there is external aggression. May your peace that surpasses human understanding prevail in the entire universe. We pray for our parents, we pray for our siblings, friends, and we pray for all our relatives, Lord God. We pray that you'll bring them together and keep them safe under the hedge of your mighty protection, Lord God. Take good care of our families, provide for them, wash over them, and may your will be done in their lives, Lord God. Keep quarrels and bitterness far from them, and for their occasional failures, instill forgiveness and peace. 
we pray for the students of Uganda Christian University. Lord our God, in your wisdom and love, you surround us with your mysteries of the universe. Send your spirit upon these students and fill them with your wisdom and blessings. Provide for those who are currently struggling to raise tuition. Refresh their minds. Refresh their passion and vision for the future. May your will be done in their academic career. May your will be done in their lives. Grant that they may devote themselves to their studies and draw ever closer to you, the source of all knowledge. May they fix their attention on Jesus, relying on him, and may their strength be strongly rooted in you, Lord God. And we pray that may you cause spiritual revival to those that have not accepted Christ as their personal and savior. We pray for the preachers going to feed us with your good news, that you use her mightily for your own glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Good afternoon. A few announcements that uh, every Wednesday through the rent period, we always have a morning service at 7.45. We encourage those uh, who may uh, be able to attend to please do attend uh, that service. And uh, in the evening, we have the One Family Fellowship. All these services take place here. Uh, the, uh, the career exhibition is uh, on Saturday 16th from 9 to 4 p.m. in the old pitch uh, near the other small gate there. Uh, it's an excellent opportunity for you to explore various career paths and connect with potential opportunities. Please do register with uh, students, uh, Director of Students Affairs, good office, and others that are in connection with that. Uh, there shall be a talk to Mama Pesh on Sunday, 24th March at 3 p.m. The topic is de depression, and it's, is it a weakness? Uh, does it mean that you are a failure or freak? The guest speaker will be Dr. Sabrina Chitaka. And uh, Men of Purpose invites all men for a seminar to take place. Uh, on the 23rd of March from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the Chaplain's Gardens. Uh, the topic of discussion is life experience, pursuing purpose amidst life setbacks. The speaker is Charles Mitty. I uh, will be glad to have you there. Uh, praise the Lord. I uh, want to invite the Deputy, uh, the Deputy Vice Chancellor finance and administration, Mr. Mugawe, uh, to come and say a few words to us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we're glad we're in the house of the Lord. And we're glad we're in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, just bring greetings as Uganda Christian University. We are glad where we are. Uh, just to communicate three pieces of information. One is that uh, tomorrow we shall be hosting uh, the Vice Chancellor and the team from St. Paul's University in Limuru in Kenya. They are a very sister university. For those who know them, we actually share a lot of our values and philosophy as well. So last year, we had a visit from UCU to that university, led by our vice chancellor. And out of that, they're giving us a return visit. So tomorrow, we shall be meeting his grace. We shall be visiting medical school, Kampala campus, and then we shall come back here. But on Thursday, you'll have a chance to see them. They'll come and say hello to us. So let's look forward to that visit of partnership. The second one is that uh, next week, uh, National Council for Higher Education has organized a conference, a leadership conference in Imbale that is on Monday and Tuesday. But from Wednesday to Saturday, there will be an exhibition, a National Council exhibition. 
It's the first National Council exhibition that has been taken away from Kampala. And they chose our campus in Mbale to host that exhibition. So it's a good gesture for us to be able to open up. So we are hosting the exhibition in Mbale. And we as Uganda Christian Investor are also exhibiting uh, at that event. So pray that uh, we win and uh, we don't take the cup away. So pray with our team, our exhibitors, our students are involved, our schools and faculties are involved. So pray that it will all go successfully. And the final one, I think is a reminder for our students who have not yet registered. We request that you do register as soon as possible because the deadlines are kicking in and we don't like a crisis point as we approach the examinations. So it's a call again for our students to please take time to register. And those that have issues, please approach the office of the DVCFNA to see what assistance can be done. And we are glad to have our, our preacher today, our sister, and uh, I think they should be introduced more. But thank you for coming. She's our head of laity in Thorncroft Chapel. So, Mrs. Peter, welcome. With those remarks, may God bless you. But also, our chaplain has been away. Our chaplain has been away. Let's welcome him. Uh, he was in this, the far east corner of Malaysia. Who wants to go to Malaysia? Speak with him. <laughs> God bless you. Uh, here, Malaysia is a land of opportunities. So, chaplain has those opportunities. Please visit him as the Divis has said. You may never know. Praise the Lord. As our preacher has been already introduced, uh, for us in our culture, when an elder in, uh, says something, you don't add. So, <laughs> thank you for introducing our preacher, and uh, we pray that the Lord will speak through you, madam, as we bring God's word. Before she comes, we shall have Ordinand Betty to come and take us through the ministry of the word. Praise the Lord. Our reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 39. We are reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 39, beginning with verse 1. Now Joseph had been brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, had bought him from the Ishmaelites, who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man, and he was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw, the Lord, saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him. And he made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed Egyptians' house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in house and field. So he left, he left all that he had in Joseph's charge, and because of him, he had no concern about anything but the food he ate. Now, Joseph was, a hand, Joseph was handsome in form and appearance, and after a time, his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, because of me, my master has no concern about anything in the house, and he has put everything that he has in my charge. He is not greater than any he is not greater in this house than an, than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except you. Because you are his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? 
And as, she, and as she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not listen to her, to lie beside her, or to be with her. But one day, when he went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the house was there in the house, she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and got out of the house. Brethren, receive the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is a great joy to be in the house of the Lord and uh, to be back home on a day like this. Uh, walking in and seeing all of you sitting there just quickly reminded me of the last few years that I was seated there and enjoying community worship just about, I think, uh, 16 or 17 years ago. And it is a great joy. That's how young I am, by the way. So be not deceived that you come to me and tell me that I am old because you will actually get it uh, wrong. Uh, my name is Peace Mukaisire Feta. I am married to one young man called uh, Reverend Simon, Reverend Dr. Simon Feta. Please, if you see him, know that he is mine. Don't be deceived. He's such a young man. Don't be deceived that he is free. He is not free, actually. He is a young man, and you can easily be deceived that finally God has answered your prayer. Direct your prayers somewhere else. <laughs> and uh, together, God has blessed us with three children. Uh, there has been a very big uh, concern that we should get twins, so we are working around the clock to ensure that twins come. <laughs> So very soon when you see things happening, just to know the Lord has answered. The Deputy Vice Chancellor has been one of the people who has been encouraging me. And the, def the Deputy Vice Chancellor, A and A, they have all encouraged me. And uh, I am working tirelessly to make sure that I fulfill <laughs> the request of the elders. <laughs> yeah, so God has blessed us with three little children. Um, uh, two boys and one girl, they are all in school, and God has been so gracious to us. We have walked this journey together for a few years, uh, just about 16 very soon, and we are very delighted at what God has continually done in us. And uh, in this walk of salvation, uh, we walk daily, and we die to self daily, and so I do not count the years, because every day I start all over again. I go back to the starting point every time I fall. So those ones I don't count, but I, I celebrate that I am still in the house and in the family of the Lord. And um, by the grace of God, I do serve as a head of laity for this very amazing chapel, uh, how many of us know the name of our chapel? By show of hands. Uh, uh, apart from you in front here. I want people behind there and in the gallery. How many of us know the name of our chapel? Okay, a chorus answer. What is the name of our chapel? Thank you very much. People usually forget that. We must make sure we add that name there. It is Thornycroft Chapel Chagwe. Because it can be Thornycroft elsewhere. But it's Thornycroft Chapel Chagwe. Uh, very many times when I meet other Christians in other, di in other parishes, I am asked. All the other parishes are called St. Luke, St. James, St. Philip, St. Andrew, St. Saint, Saint, Saint. For us, we are Thornycroft. Who is Thornycroft? Now, I want, to, I want to interest you. When you walk into the chapel on the main building, it is the only chapel we have, actually on this campus, when you walk into that chapel, I want to interest you to go and look at the plaque that is in there. And you will read a little bit about who Thornycroft was. But also interest yourself and speak to the students of theology. I'm very sure they must be knowing who he is and who he was. And so that is where we pick our name from. And it is very synonymous with uh, uh, Bishop Tucker uh, School. And so we carry the name. He is not a saint but we are saints in the making. Amen. Amen. 
Uh, this afternoon, our topic of sharing is uh, obedience in purity uh, from Genesis 39, uh, 1 to 3. It is a call for us to be obedient and in this obedience to live a life that is pure and honorable unto the Lord. Recounting from this passage here, as uh, uh, our sister read for us, we are told of a story of a young man that was born to Jacob, and there were 12 brothers, and while he is in the field, his, their brothers are in the field, the father sends him to go and check on his brothers just to make sure they were actually well. And so he runs very fast to go and check on them. Little known to him, they were plotting against him. And so while they are there struggling, wondering, can we kill him, the dreamer? There comes the dreamer, because every time he would have dreams that uh, do not go well with the others. So be very careful if you're a dreamer. Be careful who you share with your dreams. Some people will kill the dream. They will work hard to kill that dream there. So be very wise who you share with the dreams that God gives you. So young as he was, maybe about 17 years of age, he would keep sharing his dreams. And at one point, even his father rebukes him about the dream that he had. All his brothers were bowing down before him. And the father is like, you and all your brothers, including me, we are bowing down before you. And so these young men plot and say, this one that is loved by daddy. You know those sisters and brothers of yours who are loved and favored by your parents? Hmm? And so they plot against him and they want to kill him. Lo and behold, one of them says, no, let us not kill him. This blood is going to be on us. But look, there are Ishmaelites there. They are traders. Let us sell him and let him go. Yeah. And off they sell him to the Ishmaelite traders and uh, he finds his way in Egypt. Little known to them what they meant for evil, the Lord actually meant for good because it was the only way that God was going to deliver the children of Israel. Amen? And so while in Egypt, he finds himself in the house of Potiphar because that is his master, that slave master that uh, bought him. And uh, there he starts to serve. When we speak about obedience, many times we are talking about children. Obey your parents, obey your parents. It is very easy for us to relate with that. But when we talk about obedience, we are talking about it in reference to the Lord as well. And we are encouraged that as children of God, as we sit here to listen to his word, it is a call for us to obey his word and to act according to what the word of God tells us. It is not enough for us to hear the word. It is not enough for us to read the word. But it is a call for us to listen and act or do what exactly the word of God tells us. And when we speak of purity, many times there is a temptation for us to talk about purity in relation to only sexual purity. But purity as it is alone is speaking of cleanliness. Cleanliness in every aspect of it. Cleanliness in every aspect of it. Ever wondered why we do not come here and we get the, for lack of a better word, quote in quotes, theology students, please bear with me. Uh, the, the cups that we use for communion. Yeah? Is it Chelsea or the Chinese? <laughs> the Chinese and the plates and the little glasses that are used for communion. Why don't we just go to the chaplain's office and say, me, I want that cup, I want to drink what I need. Or in any church, okay? It is because it has been actually kept aside. It has been separated. We are not to defile it. And it is to be used only during our time of worship. Are we together? So when we are speaking of cleanliness, friends, and holiness or purity, we are not talking about it in terms of only sexual purity, whereas it is one of the things that we seek to actually address. But it could relate to us being uh, not guilty or being blameless or innocent in behavior. And uh, it is a desire that we as Christians should all work towards that. The basic sense of the Hebrew word of for purity is probably an emptying out or being clean, empty out and be clean or be clean would be an equivalent to what the Hebrew word of purity would actually speak of. And uh, it is repeated severally in the Bible and it is not a mistake. Uh, whenever we find a repetition in the Bible, it is basically an emphasis for us to take heed to and for us to be able to abide by. The ancient Egyptian homes were very, very big and beautiful homes. 
They did not live uh, in some of the little houses that we probably are living in today because to them, their houses were way bigger. And therefore, they necessitated that somebody couldn't be able to maintain the house and they needed workers to be able to help them to keep the place clean. And so Joseph finds him in this himself in such a service, and uh, while he's there, his master entrusts him. The Bible tells us when we read, the Lord was with him. Just write at verse 2. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was successful. He was successful. He was a successful man. He was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. The Lord still favored him while he was there. And later on, we shall see or appreciate why actually he was successful. It is important to note that when God uh, uh, chooses to bless us, he actually blesses us unreservedly, irrespective of where we are, as long as we heed to what actually he has called us to do. And so while he's in this house here, his master entrusts him with each and everything. He finds favor and he entrusts him with each and everything in the house and he's head of all the workers. And so at such a time, he also realizes he is master, a pagan master, notices that, ah, this young man has actually been blessed, and I am blessed because this young man is in my house. So the Lord places you in various places simply because he seeks to bless those places or he wants to accomplish his will and purposes for us. Joseph's obedience soon opens opportunities for him, and fortunately the opportunities also come with challenges alongside so when we read ahead in verse 6, Potiphar's wife then begins to look at him lustfully and to desire him and wants to actually uh, uh, sleep with him. And the, the Bible interestingly puts it that he was a well-built, different versions will tell you he was a well-built uh, man. When I was preparing, I, I remembered my, my seven-year-old telling me recently, he had a discussion with his uh, six-year-old friend and he said, Mommy, when I grow up, I want to have a pack. So I asked him, a pack? He's like, yes, I will tell daddy to take me to the gym, and I have a pack. Then when he says that, I realize the six pack that people talk about every day. And so he's already planning to make sure he has a pack. And this is what actually is attracting uh, a Potiphar's wife to Joseph. Because the Bible says he was a well-built young man. You can just picture the well-built young man. I don't think he had a fluffy stomach. I think he had mugged himself up a little bit, you know? So young men who are here, what are you doing with those tummies? <laughs> you please need to do something about it. Joseph was a well-built young man, and he was so desired, he was attractive. And so Potiphar's wife looks and says, I think I need to sleep with this one. I need to have him for myself. And so... He, he purposes in his heart when we read scripture. He tells, he has a conversation with her and he tells her, how can I do this? I can't, I can't. My master has entrusted everything in his, in his house to me and there is no one greater than me in this house. He has not kept anything away from me except you because you are his wife. Today what actually happens, you will say, eh, mukama agavud de. You will find somebody and they will tell you God has given you. You say, ah, yeah, I didn't ask. They came themselves. Yeah? Young men. Praise the Lord, brothers. Praise the Lord. Many, many, many have fallen prey because they said, the sister came herself to my room and she tempted me. Oh, I went and the sister is one who tempted me. You ask them what actually happened. They say, they forced me. Even Joseph was forced friends. But he purposed and he says when we read, when we read the, the scriptures, um, uh, from verses 6, when he says that, um, thus he has left all that he had in Joseph's hands, and he did not know what he had to expect, except for the bread which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome and in, in form and appearance, and it came to pass that these things that his master's wife cast a longing eye on Joseph and said, lie with me. But he refused and he said to his master's wife, look, my master does not know what it, what it is, does, does not know what it is with me in this house and he has committed all that he has in my hands. There is no one greater than, than I in the house, greater than 
sorry, there is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you because you are his wife. How can I do such a wicked, do such wickedness and sin against who? Against God. For us today, what is happening to us, we are lost and we are saying it is okay. It is very okay. There is nothing wrong. After all, no one has seen. It is just me and you. You even speak and convince yourself no one is seeing. And many times we have fallen and fallen to such a trickery that uh, the enemy has actually clothed very well and called different names. In the name of emancipation, in the name of rights, and in the name of everything, we have, a, we have fallen prey. Unfortunately, this has separated us from God. Purity in itself is an act of obedience to God and to no one else. So it is not that when we are doing this, you're doing this for the chaplain because you require a member, the chaplain should not know what you're doing. Friends, none of us is here. I do not think I live, I live my life to please the chaplain because the chaplain lives his life to please the Lord. I live my life to please and honor the Lord. May that be our desire. May that be the position where we find ourselves. That before you do anything, it is not about the chaplain. It is about God. It is not about the, 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 the roommate you have. It is about God because it is your act of service unto the Lord and not unto anybody else. Temptations are there, friends. It is very true. We are tempted daily. Yeah? Sometimes you think, oh, when I grow up and I get married, it will not happen. I can tell you when you are married, the temptations are even more. Because the, 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 the connotation out there is, after all, when she's married, she will not give me trouble. She's committed, I'm committed. We meet and ah, we sort ourselves out. It's friends with benefits, they usually call it. Okay? So be very careful. Don't be deceived. Temptations are there. But what did Joseph do when this actually came? Joseph purposes not to defile himself and he purposes to run away irrespective of what the consequences were. He leaves the clock behind. Clear evidence. Those that are doing law. When you go and you're crying, somebody has raped me, they ask you for evidence. Sometimes I think I'm like lawyers. You are so heartless. Yeah? So I should come and then and present and then, you know, but that is what it requires. Here there was evidence against Joseph, okay? So even for them, when you go to courts of law and you're reporting a defilement case and you're reporting a rape case, they'll tell you, do not take a shower. Hey, already I have been disgraced. You're telling me not to take a shower, but yes, I will not take the shower because that is the evidence they need. Go to a surgeon to actually confirm that there has been any kind of... Um, Yes. <laughs> and so, Joseph leaves evidence behind, and Potiphar's wife said, Sister Mbana, cho, let me wait. And she makes an alarm, and you see everything is orchestrated so well. Joseph at that point could have walked back and said, please don't make an alarm. Okay, it's okay, let us do this. But Joseph purposes and says, no, it is well. Similar, when I was preparing then, it reminds me of what Esther says. If I die, I what? Yeah, he accepted. And Esther said, if I die, I die. Because you do not enter into the presence of the king before he actually invites you. Joseph decides and says, Obachi, bachi, let me go. I am not going to lie with you. Would you and I be challenged today that we shall take such a position and a decision? That we shall purpose not to defile ourselves, but purpose to live in purity for the honor and glory of God. And of course, when everyone comes, they say, yes, he actually has done it. The Hebrew slave has actually done it. There is evidence that the clock is there. He did not care. He decides, because the master does not even listen to his side of the story. Friends, many times we shall not even get justice. It is well. Are we together? It is well. God will fight your cause. Do not actually seek to revenge and seek all the time to prove that you are right. Joseph did not struggle anywhere to prove that he was right, but rather he purposed that he will not defile himself. Because he says, I'll not, he does not even say, I will be sinning against myself. I'll be sinning against my, my master. I'll be sinning against you. He says, I'll be sinning against who? against God. May the Lord position us in such a way that we are able to recognize that every time we are faced with any form of sin. And so when we continue to look uh, at what the scripture is telling us, we find that uh, purity, to, uh, we are called to stay pure in obedience to the Lord, just like the Hebrew boys were. When you read the story of Daniel and his friends, and they are in a king's palace, eh? you just imagine how many Baganda do we have here? Devaganda, there are various there. Eh? 
The, the Bachika have no king. The Bachika have no king. They are like us. We, they don't have a king. That's why I said they were Ganda, or they were Soga, or they were Toro, or they were Nyoro. Those who have clearly defined kingdoms, okay? And the king invites you to his palace. You know when you go to visit the king, it is not, it is not just Mwogo and Bijanjaro, yeah? No, 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 it is not Katogo. Even if it is Katogo of Mwogo and Bijanjaro, it is not presented alone. There is a whole wide range of delicacies presented. And then these young men are looking. Sometimes I, when I'm hungry, I imagine, would I actually have managed? Maybe I would say, but also God, you also know that for us we are slaves and we are here. Let us just eat. Human nature, these young men purposed and said, we shall not defile ourselves with the food that is given to us. And they negotiate and say, please test us for just seven days. And in that negotiation, God allows that they find favor and they do not. And they do not defile themselves by eating. So when you're talking about purity and keeping ourselves pure, we defile ourselves even by what we eat. Some of us honestly defile ourselves. You feed yourself like you are feeding a pig. I am sorry to say this because there are those who love that animal. I am very much aware. But you see, we do not care how we are feeding. Everything that comes you are putting in, into the body. Drugs are out there, you are among the people eating the cookies. You are among the people taking the shisha. You are among the people who are drinking the alcohol. Then you have the whiskey. Then you have, you're all putting that in what? In this body. Friends, you cannot do that and you think you are honoring God. We cannot live in obedience when we are actually dishonoring the body that God has entrusted to us. And he tells us, remember, that our bodies are the temples of the what? In 1 Corinthians, our bodies are what? So indeed, we can actually defile ourselves or fail to keep ourselves pure by what we are watching. What is that that you're watching when you're in your room? Your data runs out every day. What is that that you're watching? Your biggest expenditure is data. You come to campus here and you find people seated and they are busy. They're actually not doing coursework. They are actually not doing coursework. Yeah? They are those watching funny movies, blue movies. They are watching porn. They are doing what? Okay, no, I'm just watching. There is nothing I am going to do. Let me tell you. You will get caught up in it. And before long, you actually want to practice what it is that you're doing. Let me, Joseph does not stand and he positions himself and says, I am a strong man. I can resist temptation. Friends, we do not resist temptation by just standing there and watching and speaking and saying, devil, go, you're casting out the devil. The Bible tells us, and it has been spoken before, when Paul tells Timothy, he tells him to do what? To flee. And Joseph actually, actually does it. He runs. He does not wait. So we cannot continue to deceive ourselves and stay in the same way that we are doing things. Proverbs 7, 1 to 13. As Solomon is warning his son against immoral women and he's telling him, my son, please be careful. But I will add and say, even the daughters, please be very careful. There are very many wicked men out there. Unfortunately for you, you are the candidates. The biggest candidates are seated here. One, you are young. Two, you have no job. Three, you have no money. Four, you are beautiful. Five, I mean there is every reason. Are we together? So the wicked men are waiting for you. But today we have the older women looking for the younger men. In the past, by the way, it was almost unheard of. Today you will find a woman who is 60 years with a 20-year-old boy. And you're thinking, what are you doing with your grandson? Not even your son. Because if she gave birth at 20 and her son is 40, uh, maybe at 20 also the son gave birth or the daughter gave birth. That is basically her grandson. Are we together? But they are very shamelessly walking around. So let us be very careful. Purity is uh, far more than just the sexual purity that we talk about, in, uh, but it comes down to the words we are speaking. Friends, there are people that I have met whose mouths are very dirty. The words we speak while we are out there, and everything seems so normal. I met a, a, a cousin to a friend of mine who had normalized speaking all manner of vulgar words. I was so disappointed in her, and I told her that the day I find your daughter speaking these words and you spank her, I will stand up and defend your daughter, and I will tell her, you speak, your mother speaks the same. Yes, because we had warned her and she had refused. And this one fateful day, she's in the house, and she hears that girl telling the boy this. I can't even speak the words she was saying. And she hears her daughter telling her son she jumped out of the bedroom. When she jumps out of the bedroom, she comes and she, uh, and she, she, she spanks her. I, I, then later on, she's telling me, you know what happened to me? Can you imagine? I, my daughter said this to the boy. 
I clapped my hands. I'm like, wow, haven't you reaped exactly what you've been sowing? Isn't it so good? Thank God for salvation. She gave her life to Christ. It is hard for her to mention any of those words again. Friends, even the words we speak, the actions, the thoughts, the feelings alone can put us off. And so what then are we supposed to do in living in obedience to honor the Lord? We need to clothe ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot say you're going to walk in purity without Christ, friends. It is basically impossible. You and me, human flesh, we cannot. But there is a power above us that is able to help us. And uh, we, we can read Romans 13, 14. We need to learn to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, irrespective of how tempting and how amazing it may look. We need to also ensure that we commit today to stay pure because God asks us and he actually instructs us to remain pure in all aspects of our lives. Can we purpose, like Job, to say that I make a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at any young woman or any young man? Can you and I purpose today that we shall Speak and make a covenant with God and say, God, as surely as you are God, I purpose that I will not look at any young man or any young woman lustfully from today and the Lord will surely enable us. The psalmist in Psalm 119 verse 9 asks a question, how can a young man keep his way pure? It is a question and there is an answer for us there by living according to what? To the word of God. Friends, there is no way we are going to detach the word of God from this work that we are in today. We need to purpose and ensure that we do that on a daily. Uh, as I conclude, uh, 1 Peter 1, 15 to 16 reminds us that we are called to be holy and pure just as the Lord is pure. So we are not just living lives. It is not just say yeah, yeah, say yeah, yeah, to gain the muguru. It is not about say yeah, yeah, friends. It is about how we are walking our lives daily. What you do, what you eat, what you see, what you speak, what you listen to, where you are. I am not going to say that me, peace, I am very strong. I am going to go to a bar and I will sit there. Me, I just went to the bar. What am I doing there in the first place? We have prayed for Casablanca to close God knows. We have prayed for them not to get customers. We prayed for Chisomali. Our time it used to be called Chisomali and it closed. When they behaved and they were very hard, it caught fire and it burnt. And the business closed. Don't tempt God, friends. You have come here and all of you are very proud. I'm from UCU, the center of excellence in the heart of Africa. You know our motto is Alpha and Omega. You should be embarrassed to even mention that motto there when you are in the bala there. Let me tell you people, if you want to know the students of UCU, come to us who are in the community of UCU. We know the students of UCU. Sometimes I walk into the shops and I, I am talking with the shopkeepers. I am like, ah, but never and I'm thinking, what are you saying? I'm like, our students of UCU, the border border men to see what was it rawa no kumachanga mabala kuroku mkaga kumachato was it rawa no ngateba manjina chigena mumaso and one border border man actually told me it's like we carry them they are drunk they do not even know where they are going but there is a young man they were with who actually told probably who took them and gets the border and tells the border mutuale ku victory hostel mutuale wali kutupendani jagenda and by the time they take up the house, she doesn't even know what is happening in the world. That is not how we are going to keep ourselves pure. That is not how we are going to actually continue to live our lives. Friends, obedience is a call and obedience is not a request. Are we together? And once we are obedient, the Lord actually blesses us. When Abraham was obedient, the Lord blessed him. God calls him and tells him, go and he obeys and he goes to a land he actually doesn't know. And God blesses him there. God tells him, sacrifice this boy. And he carries the boy. And he walks very, very, very firm and very strong. And he goes and lays the boy. And lifts the knife. Friends, obedience has got no two ways. There is no middle ground to it. There is no middle ground to purity, friends. We cannot do one and leave the other. They go hand in hand. 
It is for us to work out our salvation on a daily with fear and trembling. And as long as we are working out our salvation with fear and trembling, we shall hate sin because God hates sin. We shall shun evil because the Lord shuns evil. Do not pretend to be so strong, friends. We are as strong as long as we have not been faced with a temptation. So the best thing is flee. You see them coming, looking at you with funny eyes. My brother, just run away. My sister, when he begins telling you sweet words, don't just sit there and listen. You know they make you feel good and get butterflies in your stomach. No, run, run. They're not going to help you. Are we together? You are going to defile yourself. You are going to lose it at the end of the day. But there is a hope for us if it has happened. There is a free call for us to embrace Christ and embrace salvation. And he promises that when we confess his faithful and just to cleanse us, to wash us, and to make us whole. So it, it is all not lost. Don't say for me, what you're talking about, you do not know, Madam Preacher. I have done all those things there, meaning for me, I am wasted and I'm useless. No, 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 no. Unfortunately for us, or fortunately for us, in the world you will be looked at as useless. For us, this side, once you cross over and you come back and say, I surrender, the Lord picks us up. He cleans us and he redeems us. Like he did to the prodigal son, when he did whatever he did. When he walked and did everything, he went for the parties you people go for. Those parties you people attend, those night-night parties you say, birthday party, over what sleepover, over what what, you know the names you call them. After he had done all those things and he realized anyway, what shall it benefit me to gain the whole world and yet lose my own soul? Let me go back home. And the father opens his arms wide open and he tells him, come back home. The Lord is calling us today. Irrespective of what has happened, there is still a hope for us. There is still room for us. Heaven is not congested. No, 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 no. There has not been any time that anyone has received revelation that enough, we have gotten enough people in heaven. Just as earth still has space, heaven has space. And the call is for us to actually embrace this call today and accept God and purpose today. There, are always, there is a first time to everything. Accept the Lord today and walk with him. Once we accept and embrace the Lord, he changes, he transforms us, he renews us, and he makes us exactly what he wants us to be. May the Lord bless us. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Reflect on the words that we have received this afternoon. And if you want to make that personal prayer to the Lord, you can just repeat after me, Dear Lord, I give you my life. I call you into my life. Come and take charge of my life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Renew me and transform me in Jesus' name. Amen. That prayer alone is enough for you to be received by the Lord and continue to walk as he wants. Father, we thank you and we pray that as many as have received this word and have prayed that brief prayer, the Lord, you receive us. Help us not, King of Kings, to look at sin and stay around, but to run away and free away from sin, but also to always keep our ways pure by doing your will, by reading your word. Help us to be obedient in all aspects of our lives. For the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. And may the blessing of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you, remain with us now and forevermore. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us appreciate our preacher, the wonderful message. Tell your neighbor, run away from sin doesn't mean that you were coward. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes, you run away from what? From sin. And the cowards live longer. God bless you. <laughs>